Hello YouTube, this is Braden with Midwest Websites, your solution for business website design and search engine optimization. And today we're going to be talking about one of the most common errors that comes up with WordPress websites. Have you ever gone in and performed a plugin update or installed something new only to find yourself staring at this blank white page? Unfortunately, you're not the only one who's been stuck in a situation like this before. This blank white page is affectionately known as the white screen of death, and is one of the more common WordPress errors that you can run into. Fortunately, while this does have the downside of locking you out of your WordPress admin dashboard in most cases, you do have the ability to go in and turn off your plugins and theme in your WordPress database, which will almost always give you access to the dashboard again. Today's video is going to show you how to do exactly that. Now, example.midwestwebsites.com has been installed on a GoDaddy shared cPanel. I've installed a number of plugins as well as a theme to get this white screen to come up. We're going to go ahead and go into the cPanel admin area of the GoDaddy hosting platform. Yours may look a little different depending upon your web host. You may have a cPanel that has a blue and white background instead of GoDaddy's green. You may have a different environment altogether like Plesk or something proprietary. Most of these hosting environments do give you the ability to access your database and this will be mandatory to go in and perform the changes that I'm going to show you how to do today. There are a handful of hosts out there like WordPress.com that do not give you database access, so you will want to reach out to them to discuss your options if you find yourself in a situation where you cannot access your database. So to get started, we're going to be looking for PHP My Admin. Most cPanels have this, as well as a number of other hosting environments. And we're going to go ahead and open that up here and we're going to click the name of our database. If you need to find out which database is tied to the website you're working with, you can actually do that in your file manager here. You can just look for your wp-config.php file for your WordPress installation. I only have the one site, so I'm going to be looking in my root directory, public underscore HTML. We're going to go to code edit, and we'll be able to confirm that the name of our database here matches the name of our database in PHP My Admin. So we'll click the name of the database to go ahead and open all of these different sections. I have a bunch of plugins installed, so I have a lot more fields than some of your WordPress websites may have. That's Less is generally more with these, so that's generally going to be okay. I'm going to go ahead and find my options table. Yours may not be called WP underscore options. It may have a random string of letters and numbers before options instead. That generally doesn't matter. It's just a different way of naming the database. So once we're in the options table, now that we have gone over how to find our database and the database prefixes, we're going to go ahead and look for three fields to turn off our plugins and our theme. The first field is going to be on the second page here of this installation. Yours may be on a different page. Different WordPress installations and different hosts set these up a little differently. We're going to be looking for active plugins for our plugin portion, and we're going to be looking for two fields for our theme, the template and the style sheet. Now these can be named the same or they can be named differently depending on whether you're using a child theme. But first I think we're going to go ahead and start by turning off our plugins. Now you can double click the field here. We're going to go ahead and use the edit button to the left instead just to open it up in a separate window. And we're actually just going to take everything in this box here out. Now, I've already copied this into my notepad just in case I need it again. 
I recommend that you do the same just in case. It isn't strictly required that you do this, but if you need to turn things back on in order to restore a functionality, this can be a good way to retrace your steps and undo changes that you've made. Once you've got that, you'll just hit the Go button down here at the bottom to save your change, and your plugins are disabled. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to rename our template and style sheet to one of the other themes that we have set up in our WordPress website. I personally recommend that you use one of the default WordPress themes that comes with every installation, either 2015, 2016, or 2017 as of this recording. And we can actually find those in our file manager as well. We're going to go over to the WP content folder real quick, and we're going to go to the themes folder. This is going to show us the themes that we've got installed here. And I'm going to go ahead and use 2017. So we're going to go ahead and just put that in our notepad just so that we remember what it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy it because we're going to need that in a moment. And we're going to go back to our database. And we're just going to edit the template and the style sheet to the new theme. I'm just going to remove what was there and put this in. It is case sensitive. And the default WordPress themes do use the same name for the template and the style sheet. So we're going to go ahead and put those in there. So now our WordPress theme has been changed. And now when we go to example.midwestwebsites.com, we should be able to see our site. It's come up for us, so let's see if we can jump over to our admin dashboard. I'm already signed in. And it's let us right back in. From here, you're going to be able to work on diagnosing which plugin or theme is creating the issue for you by and turning things back on one step at a time. Otherwise, if you know what happened, you can go in and turn on everything except what caused the site to go down. And if you know that a plugin update caused the site to break, you should be able to go in and turn everything on except for that one plugin to restore the bulk of your website's functionality while you do some additional troubleshooting to find a way around the issue that you're facing. Usually that will involve either reaching out to your web developer or the plugin developer. And that's all there is to it. I hope that this video has been of help to you. If it has, please remember to like, share, and subscribe so that we can get this information out to the webmasters who need it. Beyond that, I'll wish you an excellent rest of the day.